Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning to the great state of Texas. Good morning to the great United States of America. Good morning to the entire world. Good morning to every nook and cranny receiving our signal. That 100,000 watt transmitter that our wonderful supporters make sure stays active. Make sure is able to bring you all the news, all the information, all the great eclectic music, including some of the many great songs being played right here by the one and only Howard. We are going to have a, a great show for you today. But you know, folks, before we get started, we have to go to our geniuses that keep all those strings connected so that we can get to you. Buenos dias, mis hermanos favoritos. Good morning, my peeps. How are you guys doing this and, morning? And guten Abend. Wie geht's? Oh my <laughs> God, German. Uh, yes, off Deutsch. All right. I don't know it, but the only, know, the only thing German. I know in German is ich liebe dich, which is I love you. That's the only phrase huh. I learned. Yes. I know many other words, too. All right. Good morning, Alberto. It's going to be a good day. Perfect weather. And I have a rant this morning. Let's hear I, it, I, brother. I was, sitting, I was sitting in front of my television set yesterday watching the news of Ken Paxton getting milk poured on him again. So uh, when does this stop? When are we going to persecute? I mean, when, when are we going to prosecute these crooks? I mean, look at when they when they found him and they acquitted him of all of the the books and books of charges. Oh well, it's okay. No, it isn't. Vote him out. I mean, we I need agree. to vote out the governor. We need to vote out Dan Patrick. We need to vote out every last one of them. Send them packing, because it's only going to get worse. Texas is so backward in their politics anyway. It's just ridiculous. So I'm sitting there thinking, you can get away with anything you want in Texas, as long as you have an elected official can do anything they want and get away with it. Oh, they'll harass them. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we brought them to trial and all. Balderdash. You did not do anything. So, folks, heed this warning. Go vote them out, please. And if you think your vote doesn't count, Honor the people who died for your vote, your right to vote, by going to vote them out. Please, we've got to get rid of the rats in Austin. We just have to, because our state is suffering. You know, you make a point of it that they don't take part in the Medicare trade, that we, that we pay for. Our citizens pay for this, but take, oh, no, no, we don't need that. Yes, you do. Okay, my, my rant is over with, but. I am glad I, you made that rant. That's an important rant. And you, you made, because you told me you're going to be talking about that, I went and edited the newsletter and put the article about Ken Paxton in there. Because the truth of the matter is, while I was irate about it yesterday, there was so much going on, I forgot about it. And thankfully, this morning, you're like, you know, you brought that up. And I'm like, oh, man, we got to talk about that with our peeps as well. So thank you, my brother. And that's an important oh, rant. Great minds think alike. And speaking of great minds, we have some wisdom from one of the best minds I know. Yeah, my little toe hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Good that's not all that's going to hurt if you don't give us some wisdom. Good morning, Egberto. How are you? Good morning, sir. Th great hearing your voice. Okay, this is going to be the truth hour. Listen to that small, clear voice on community radio. Media deregulation and then media consolidation has left the public with a lopsided corporate-driven media. Garbage. You can't find the other side of the story in mainstream media. Not here at not here at community radio. We are all about the other side. Politics done right confronts the lies and half-truths in the media. Democracy Now! goes out and puts a microphone in the face of the people that the catastrophe or whatever's going on is happening to and gets their opinion. You talk explores local and international topics <clears throat> that affect Houston, and that's your small, clear voice of KPFT. 
90.1 oh. in Houston, 85.9 in Galveston, and 89.7 in Huntsville. And I want to throw out a shout out to Fred Portnoy, who's listening to us up in New Hampshire. He uh, streams the station up there. He's Arnie Arneson's general manager of the station up there. Because I had a good talk with him yesterday because of the problems we've been having with the show. And I think they're all local. I don't think there's anything wrong with their files. I think there's something wrong with their computers. So anyway, uh, shout out to Fred. Thank you so much for all your help. We appreciate you. He said, yeah, I really enjoy Egberto. And I, I like the banter between you and Jack. So there, I said your name on the radio. And now we turn it back over to Egberto for the rest of the Truth Hour. Well, look, thank you, guys. And and look, thank you for that, uh, Jack, you know, and, and thank you for enumerating those programs because it's good for people who start here to know that there's more that we have with you talk and democracy now, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because we, we really want to make sure to get uh, get get the, the, the truth out there. And and and, and again, I, I want to start with Ken Paxton. Um, you know, the article, I just added it to the newsletter, the online portion of the newsletter. I send out a newsletter every day at five in the morning. So I don't know, probably nine, 10,000 people or so. And um, the the um, but the online version was changed to add what what Howard just spoke about, because I forgot about that. It, that should have been in there. But it's an article towards uh, from the Texas Tribune that plays it up. It's Ken Paxton defrauded people. We, uh, and it, you know, and it, it, he, his fine was about, I guess, th near three hundred thousand uh, dollars. You know, that's fel That's a serious felony. I want you guys to think about this. Every day you watch your news programs, uh, you see the petty thieves on TV. I'm not defending those petty thieves at all. You see them going to Seven Eleven and they rob somebody. You see them go and they 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 go into a store. And we, the, the way the media portrays it, we hate their guts. These are people. They're they're not working for their own, and they're just going out there and stealing stuff and taking stuff. You go out every morning. Those of you behind the, the listening right now, including some of you getting ready to get into that car and head to work. Some of you trying to rush and get stuff for your kids right now together, and you are doing stuff. And you see on TV these thugs that are going into the store and robbing, etc. And you justifiably, justifiably are pissed off. But you know what? That's chump change. That is chump change. And Paxton, another protege of our brother Trump, are doing what's called grand theft. They don't steal from you for a $10 or $5 or a, a beer or a cigarette or something like that. These guys are doing some major stealing. But because it's not, first of all, I'm reading the uh, the Tribune article, and they're just matter of fact, you know, the deal which landed. Look, they call it the V. Look, it says prosecutors on Tuesday agreed to drop securities fraud charges facing General uh, uh, General Paxton if he performs a hundred hours of community service and fulfill conditions under. Uh, pre-trial agreement, bringing an abrupt end to the nearly nine-year-old felony case that has loomed over the battled uh, uh, Republicans since his early days. A deal, here it is what they call it, the deal which landed three weeks before Paxson is set to face also requires him to take 15 hours of legal ethics courses and pay restitution to those he accused of defrauding. More than a decade ago, he allegedly solicited investors in McKinney Technology Company without disclosing his firm, and it goes on and on. But they call it a deal, right? It's a deal. No, it's a travesty, not a deal. But these newspapers, even the Texas Tribune, they try to toe the middle line. But if they're talking about those thefts, those thieves that go into 7-Eleven or go into a McDonald's and rip you off or whatever, they 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 don't mind calling them the thugs that they are, right? But Trump and these guys who don't rip off $10, 15 20 $30, they take hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars from you. And we are supposed to just placate them and think it's okay. He gets a hundred 
hours of community service, $300,000 restitution. And then in 18 months, he has no record. Remember, several times I talk about BS in, BS out, right? So when the statistic comes out that says the, the statistics on criminality comes out in 2026, Paxton will not be a part of that stat. In as much as he's no less crooked than that, those other people, but those other people, they will show up as criminals, right? Their class will show up as criminals. Not Ken Paxton, not Donald Trump. Donald Trump has the, even the Supreme Court on his side. You see, uh, when we tell you, folks, that you know we are made to believe things, we are just told things. And they, the people in power, they set the narrative. And in them setting the narrative, they control your mind if you are willing to just accept the, 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 the narrative that they provide you. And it seems like, oh, this is how things are. Ken Faxon is no less a crook. In fact, he's a greater crook than that person ripping off a, a stick of gum at the 7-Eleven. He should be treated that way. He should pay the price that way. And until we as a society, until we as a society start to see things the way they really are, as we as a society stop giving a certain group of folks the authority to rip us off, to steal from us, and look the other way, it's on us. And that's what we try to do here. By the way, we know what the narrative is, and we know when we've been we've doing things for decades, it's hard to change. What we're trying to do here with what Howard and is calling the truth hour is we're trying to ask you to open your minds up and see the full narrative. Welcome aboard, Patrick Baron. He says, good morning, Egberto. Why isn't Paxson going to prison? Because he has privilege. Patrick Baron says, this makes me so angry. If that domestic terrorist AG was a black man, it would be a different story. Notice when I started the story, I didn't bring in race. But look at the racial component as well. But you know what? If it were, uh, if it were Jack as well, my brother Jack, white guy with a beard and all of that, he would be thrown in jail too. It's a special, it's a special group of a particular sect that get the book thrown at them. Let's remember that. Let's bring Joe in. Let's see if Joe is going to, uh, what Joe is going to have for me. Good morning, my brother, Joe. Come on in. Of course, you got in before I even started my show, Joe. You are a popular dude. You actually got to come on before yeah. I got to the meat of my show, of our show, I should say. Talk to me. Oh, well, I'm an, I'm an early bird. What can I say? Um, but yeah, you know, it, it just seems to me that this is just another example of the lawfare that's going on. You know, if there was actually any proof, you know, uh, of, of, of Ken Paxton's wrongdoing, you know, then a prosecutor would surely have have tried him and convicted him. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but it just looks funny when you charge somebody, oh, I'm going to charge you with capital murder. And then nine years later, after I dragged you through the mud for nine years. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll just bust that down to trespassing and let you off with community service. What does that say about the original case? It says that there was nothing there. Same with Trump, right? And, and you guys, you know, out of one side of your mouth, you say, we're, you know, we're the alternative. We're the truth. We're going to offer you the truth. And then you turn to the Texas Tribune as your unassailable source of truth. But that is nothing but a propaganda outfit, and you know it. Okay, can I answer? First of all, I, I brought the Tribune in and I actually castigated the Tribune, sir. You didn't see me bring the Tribune in as a defense. I actually said the way the Tribune covered the story was matter of fact and wrong. In other words, the Tribune called it a deal. The Tribune just went ahead and said he's going to get 100 hours community service and he's going to pay a $300,000 fine. I am completely against that because what Ken Paxton did is grand theft. Read what he did. Don't, don't, don't follow the narrative. What? And that's what I'm... Joe, hold on. I Come on. Okay. We, it's one at a time, brother. Uh, I go through the facts of what he did. 
and 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 the what he signed on for the hundred hour community service, what he signed on for the three hundred thousand uh, dollar fine was because he really copped to doing what he did. He ripped off people based on the way the stocks were sold. We have all kinds of crime. Now, here's my concern with you, Brother Joe, okay? And, and, and I want you to hear me. I don't want you to be preparing for an answer. I want you to give me the same respect I give you and listen to what I'm telling you, all right? If this were Joe, you, Joe, my favorite oil man, if this were Joe, doing what Ken Paxton did. While you are here defending Ken Paxton after being able to sham for nine years, you're, look at how we look at those nine years. You look at them, you look at the nine years of dragging him through the mud. I look at the nine years of him being extremely savvy with the legal system so that he didn't have to face the pauper. In other words, there are two ways to look at it. Check it out. You, you immediately go to his defense and say, we dragged him through the legal system for nine years. I said he was a smart dude who knew how to get, I mean, even if he got convicted, he got another nine years of freedom. But at the end, what happened with him is what happened to so many people with power. It's something that wouldn't have happened to you. I am trying to get people like you, Brother Joe, to start looking out for you, Brother Joe, because that what was afforded Ken Paxton would not have been afforded to you. Please reply, sir. It, I think that um, you know if if um, if um, if there was no case against me, it it would be dropped if I were able to lawyer up and withstand the barrage. Most people can't withstand the barrage. But stop. honestly, I think the, the stop. reason he was attacked. Please stop. Please stop. I want to stop you because you made a very you made a very smart statement. I want to stop you right there. You're correct. If you had had the ability to lawyer up the way Ken Paxton did, maybe you would have got off as well. But if you would have had the ability to do everything Ken Paxton did, it would have put you in the same class with Ken Paxton. And what my contention is, is people of that class get a different justice system than you do, Brother Joe. And what I'm telling you is what we work for here is so that it's a even playing field. I want you to stop defending these guys and start saying, I want the same opportunities all these guys have. Continue, sir. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, it, it, the reason I'm defending him um, is because you know, he's come out on the right side of a lot of issues that I care about. The border, for example, right? Um, you know, um, the, the, the gay rights movement that at first mm -hmm. I was all about it, but, you know, it's turned into a complete fiasco now. Mm -hmm. um, he's, you know, and, and I think it's for those reasons that um you know he's under attack okay I mean, let's stop it, let's stop there you i i want to take the things that you say one at, one at a time sir it's not that i want to interrupt you now you said uh you were willing and tell me if i'm misunderstanding this it seems to me like you agree with me somewhat but that the reason you still stick with this guy is that this is a one guy that you think fulfilled your values with respect to gay rights the the border and these other issues. So you are saying you're willing to forgive him for certain things because somehow he's going to pull down the things that you want. Did I, did I understand that correctly? No, no, you didn't say you didn't. I, I didn't say I was willing to forgive him for anything. Okay. Um, well, so my you, question is, is reason, you said, the real reason for the prosecution, yeah. you know, is that it's for these things, but, but at the, okay, um, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You can't, you made a statement. You made a statement that needs to be corroborated. You said the reason they prosecuted him is because he's a go he's going against the gay issues, the border, and I forgot what the third thing was. Uh, that's what you're saying. You think that's the reason he was prosecuted? Yeah, he, he, he he defends Trump all the time, right? Okay, but, uh, but, but yeah, the reason. And, and, he, but but at the end of the day, if the prosecutor had the evidence needed to to convict him. They would have done so and not but offered they, him a deal. That's, that's the way not it true. Works. No, that's not true. L let me tell you. He uh, it, that that's that's 
probably one scenario that you could be right about. That's one scenario. But the other scenario is that when you are powerful and of a certain class and have certain lawyers that have friends, you actually get away with quite a bit. Don't you agree with that? Um, well, you know, and if you're politically connected to the right people, exactly, it, it, exactly. Period, yeah, absolutely. So, He's not don't you think? Don't you think the fact that right the facts of the case, and don't you think that because that the facts of the case didn't change? In other words, if you read the proffer right now, you'll see that he copped to doing exactly what they said he did, and he, he he's willing to pay back the money, which is three hundred thousand dollars. That's a huge felony. And he's willing to do a hundred hours of community service. He gets no jail time. But the magical thing that occurs afterwards is after 18 months, it, it, it shows that he did absolutely nothing wrong. Don't you see something wrong with that? Well, yeah. So, so that's the way it works when there's a plea deal, you know, and, okay. and, and any lawyer worth his fault is going to recommend that he sign okay, that. Joe. Okay, Joe. Would you submit and, and move on. All right. Joe, okay. I don't think we're. I don't think we're gonna. We're gonna agree on this. Uh, so I'm not gonna keep beating a dead horse. But I, I just want to say that I, I thank you for calling. I I enjoy that that your your point of view. I thank you for. I'm give. I give you the opportunity as well to give your point of view. I completely uh, think that you are currently on the wrong side. Now there there is one issue when when you talk about let's say the um the border. Gay and what was the third topic that you brought up again? Uh, real quick, I forgot. Supporting Trump. Yeah, and supporting Trump. Let me just say, I I want to thank you for listening to the program, and I want you to keep listening to the program because some at some point I I'm going to plant some sort of a seed, just like you and everybody have planted seed or seeds around, but one that gets you uh, to stop seeing these guys through a particular lens, because brother. It's a dangerous lens, but we'll talk. We'll keep talking. You keep calling and keep listening. All right. Sounds good, Egberto. Have a beautiful day. You too, sir. All right. Let's jump to Steve. Uh, I think uh, let's jump to Augie and then Stephen. Come on in, Augie. Uh, Kali said, "Are you all?" No, that's Greek for you. Uh, good morning. But uh, Ken Paxton, uh, uh, he also got his wife on there in politics. He's married, and he had a mistress. And he got her pregnant, mm -hmm. and then he uh, he paid for an abortion. Yeah, now it's he's amazing, isn't it? The rest of the women here, and uh, it's not just the Tribune. The Houston Chronicle had a great article about him. How his own staff don't even trust him. Uh, one of his he, he gets his staffers and tell him uh, he he bought uh, he ordered some personalized state plates for his car, and he asks his staffer. Uh, but can you go pick him up for me and pay for him? So the staffer went and got his license plates, his personalized plates, but he wouldn't give it to Paxson until Paxson gave him cash. And it took a while before Paxson got the cash to buy his own personalized plates that his staffer had to pay for, and his staffer would not give it to him until he got the cash from him. That says a lot about him. And, uh, and, uh, the rest of, and it is political because the rest of the Republicans in the state house uh, forgave, forgave him. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, he also had the t uh, taxpayers of Texas try to pay for his court case, hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think it, that is what triggered uh, the investigation in the Senate, the, the attempt at impeaching him. And it, it was powerful forces from Dan Patrick, who received $3 million from a conservative group that kind of paid off the Republican guys from not impeaching. The votes were actually there to impeach uh, to impeach the man. And a lot of payoff went on. Now, now what I'm trying to get, look, l l all I can do and all we can do, you know, with it, uh, Joe has a particular mindset. And, uh, you know, at some point, uh, like many of us, I think Joe is ultimately, because he's a smart dude, he's ultimately going to be able to move ideology away from uh, from the persons and stop attaching people to ideology. Look, I'm completely against that ideology that he has with respect to the, to the border, with respect to gay rights. But here's the thing. I don't want to look come across like some huge judge on Joe because, like I said, and I, I fess up to it, when I came to this country originally, I was a homophobe. 
I, I, I was taught, I was slapped around, I learned that I was the wrong, the person that was wrong. I repeat this over and over on the program because I want people to understand that people can, in fact, change. I did. I stopped being a sexist, I stopped being a homophobe, and I stopped being a hell of a lot of things that are prejudicial, that are wrong. And all we are trying to do here is tell folks, hey, look at yourself and look at what people are doing and stop being snowed. Anyway, sorry, I just had to put that that little thing in there. Continue, please, Augie. And then we go to Stephen. Right. And, and I grew up in the 50s and 60s when prejudice was legal. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I grew up just like you did. Uh, uh, homopho- uh, homos homophobe, were bad. Yeah, then, right. Uh, oh, yeah, but, then I, but then I went to college and I met some. And then later on in life, I met others. And they're human beings just like we are. But, exactly. Uh, I, because of that, everybody attacks right. them. And, the, uh, and if you read the Chronicle, that articles about uh, Paxton, but they're also uh, homophobes. In San Diego, they were strongly against uh, homosexuals moving in and buying houses. Well, uh, they moved in, uh, and uh, everybody complained about them, but then they fixed up their yard, their house. They brought it up. And then they saw what it was. And then they started liking uh, homosexuals, and they encouraged them to come to the house because they picked up the neighborhood. And then, uh, <laughs> they brought, hey, they brought, they, they, they brought the character, man. They brought the character. <laughs> right. All, they, were all, they, were all, they were all strongly against them until they started coming in and seeing them. And they picked up the neighborhood and they picked up the houses in Montrose. You I've know, let me those, tell you. Yeah, Augie, what you prove is that, you know, a lot of a lot of prejudice and a lot of all these things are usually fear. Right. And even with Brother Joe, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I want to engage Joe in, in, in certain things. And, you know, I, I want to prove to Joe at some time because you notice the, the things that he brought up. Right. Gays, Trump and uh, gays, Trump and the border. Right. These are the things that that the Republicans used to divide us. Right. But if I start going down all the list of things that we as progressives stand for, Joe is going to say, yeah, I want that for me and my family. Yeah, I want that for me and my family. And folks are going to realize that these other things, it doesn't make sense for us to go there. But Augie, I want to go on to the other person. Give me a quick closer that I can get to Stephen. Well, uh, read the Chronicle and, it, and you learn a lot of stuff, not just the Tribune. Thanks. Thank, Bye-bye. thank you, brother. Have a good one. Let's go to Stephen. Come on in, Stephen. Good morning. And how are you doing, sir? Good morning, brother. Uh, to you and your family. Uh, several weeks back, uh-uh, you had uh, Kim Oz on the program, in which I called in, and I uh, told her that I would not be voting for her, and I gave her specific reason as to why she could not go to my vote. Uh, I took went ahead and voted for her opponent. Last night, I was shocked by two uh, judges here in Harris County doing something that was really predictable. And I won't go so far to say it's unprecedented because we know the, uh, the get-out-of-jail-free part that we generally have with our politicians and the people. That being said, I was absolutely apprehensive at the fact that Ken Paxton, after nine years of being under the quote-unquote periscope of criminality, they let him go. As I had stated, and as you told Joe, he cannot get away with the things that Ken Paxton got away with. Officer Goins got away with things that we as a normal uh, young chief public could not have gotten away with. He got away with capital murder. He and his 12 co-defendants, which were not listed as co-defendants, but everybody involved in the felony, should be like I said with January 6th or 09 North. Five people died, but nobody's paying for those five deaths. You know, this is crazy. This is, after five years, nobody goes to jail for that that that, that woman, that man. 
Not even. You're talking about you're talking about that. You're talking about the raid on that house where the police officers illegally went in and shot up them claiming they were drug dealers. And you're right. There another officer just got off. And it just shows you how powerful that blue line is, not only here in Texas, but throughout the country. And it's so it. darn Yeah. Yeah. It's so darn hard. Yeah. And you know, let me let me just say one thing uh, to you, my friend, uh, Stephen. We are complicit. We, the population, we, and, and I'm saying okay. you, me, we're, and let me tell you how we are complicit. Uh, whenever you are on a grand jury, they, they always take, say that a, a, that a district attorney can, 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 can get, indict a ham sandwich. And he can also, or she can also, not indict a ham sandwich. And it is on us to not believe the crap when we know cops are bad and corrupt to let them off. Because we, as the grand jury, have the power to vote and say, no, nah, this guy is guilty of capital murder. We will indict. And, uh, uh, you know, so we are partially complicit in buying. You, you notice how I, I'm going to use my brother Joe as an example. You see how Joe came to the defense of Ken Paxton, someone that most of us know is a crook. You see how Joe came in defense of uh, of uh, Donald Trump, somebody that we know is not only a crook, but somebody that doesn't have real good character. He's pretty much characterless and cares about nobody. But we yeah. have a good person like Joe supporting these guys. Joe is, a, is our brother. Joe is a part of the system, right? If we have a lot of Joes out there, that are willing to, you know, let's say, put as colored glasses on to support these folks, then nothing changes. Because, again, we have these people that do wrong. And until Joe feels it himself, in other words, uh, people like Joe, what happens is uh, a lot of times they don't see things until it happens to them. When I used uh, two day, yesterday, I think it was when Joe called in. I told him, I, I use race for something. And I said, I've lived it. And he said, you see, you're bringing in the race car. And then I said, he said, you don't know anything about how I grew up. And I said, you're right, but I'm willing to learn. But I wish you were willing to learn about what I go through as well, right? And you may not be a bad person, but you have to get there. So what I'm saying, Stephen, is we have to put it on ourselves as well, sir. Right, I get that. But uh, let, let me just say this, uh, uh, relative to the uh, the Boys murder, quote unquote murder case. In order to present to a judge a quote unquote fact based warrant, there first of all had to be evidence, okay? So there had to be some heroin on the table, all right? Then the heroin had to be attributed to an informant, okay, a named person. And then the judge grants the warrant to be executed. Okay, now, where did the heroin come from if there was no informant? Ah. Yeah. But I also want you to know something else. I used to, I still watch 20, Channel 26 with the uh, weather primarily, but I also get the news. Well, and back during the times and before going, there had been a lot of kick-in uh, uh, robbers in which the uh, people were killed supposedly for their drug and uh, uh, dope dealing uh, practices in which money and dope was supposed to have been taken from those particular boats. Mm -hmm. With the HCD not closing those cases, right? And the people right. were supposed to come in under the auspices of being police. Well, I want you to know, since that time, till this time now, how many times you hear that in the news? You don't hear very often at all. That... And I had to defend that there were police, actual police behind that. And they were getting away with it. Stephen, I'm even more to believe now that that's the case. Stephen, let me just tell you first of all, you're correct. And I said we have we are we use this forum here 
to enlighten people about this. There are many people who are hearing this for the very first time as you're talking about it. We just want people to know this. And in doing so, uh, we hope not only to change minds, but also that folks would start taking some more responsibility so that we don't have this happening over and over again. I got to go to um, Harry. Uh, so uh, look, I appreciate your call, Stephen, and thank you so kindly for listening, my brother. All right, let's go to Harry. Come on in, brother. Harry, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, good morning. Good morning, uh, Uberto. I prayed for you and your family last night when I was at my uh, recharge the week for uh, uh, down my Fondren Church. Um, so and I pastor, do appreciate that, sir. Uh, I appreciate you. Right. Thank you. Yes, I told the pastor that your wife is doing better, and hopefully someday you, Howard, Jack, and Steve Hunter can come to my church. But well, I'll get Please. off of that. Um, well, what I wanted to comment on, you know, I remember right when you were telling, talking to Steve about Joe, and you and you and you mentioned about race yesterday. I remember you you, you when you were talking with Joe, you said something about baby mamas and mm -hmm. uh, black men, and how, and that label is uh, attached to black men more than anyone else. And and that's all you were pointing out. And Joe's just you know, uh, trying to say you make everything about race. And I like what Spike said, and I like what Johnny said, and I like what Augie said yesterday. No, um, race built the United States, race is a part of it. And, and and you point those things out of what black people and brown people or yellow people have to go through when they get discriminated against and this racist system is, that was built. Now I'll get on to, you know, with Ken Paxton. Wait, uh, uh, hold on a second, Harry, because I want to, I want to say, I want to, I want to piggyback off of something you said to the audience, because I love to use okay. what you guys say to, to enhance a, a word. When when Joe, uh, it took me aback when Joe said, for just mentioning that baby mama is usually, uh, these terms are associated to black men. First of all, I want to let you know this. I am in, I, I, I have a ton of black uh, men that are friends and a ton of white men that are friends, etc. If I talk about baby mama, the stereotype is the black the, the black guy. I'm not saying it's correct, or I'm okay. not saying everybody has that stereotype. I'm saying that whenever we talk about out of wedlock kids and we look at stats and all that kind of stuff, it is enhanced from a black point of view. That's just, uh, I mean, whether you're white, black, blue, or whatever, let's accept that those are yeah. things. Is it true? No, I don't know. Not one bad uh, that my, in my circle. All of us take care of our kids. We all do the right thing, etc. All right. Are there bad folks? Yes. Are, is it based on race? No, but that's how they make it. It's based on social economics. That's why those of lower socioeconomic standards, which black folks are higher in the socioeconomic uh, depression than whites in, uh, in general, that's why those figures look that way. But if you normalize it for, uh, for, for, for social and, and, and economics, we are all people. We're all the same. We got to stop the separation. And that's the kind of stuff that I bring. I'd wanted to say that because when we talk about race, we should speak about race in a sensible manner. Race doesn't exist, but since we do it here, right. we have to do it in a sensible manner. Sorry for interrupting. Go ahead, Harry. That's okay. Yeah, hey, uh, with Ken, we have Ken Paxton, the bribes, the, uh, the woman he had the affair with. We all know that he was guilty and that the state legislator of Texas, they had the votes, like you said, and they just didn't do their job. And Joe, I just think, is in denial of that. Now let's look at Donald Trump. We can go down the list, and I've heard uh, Captain Riddles mention uh, this. Or he mentioned it some weeks ago when Donald Trump was talked about. I did nothing wrong. Well, you want a list? Okay. Did he or did he not? <laughs> convict? Exactly. Did he or did he not get convicted for mortgage fraud and for tax fraud? And then Joe was jumping all over the teacher, James. Because he's up, he's up, he's doing her job, and he's up and saying that he's fisting trying to make something stick. Is the Espionage Act when he took those documents out of the White House that's pending? The Stormy Daniels case is going to start on April fifteenth. Uh, we have this uh, in Georgia uh, from four years ago uh, when he was looking for eleven thousand seven hundred eighty votes to try to overturn that. Arizona, uh, Wisconsin. Okay. Harry, 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 uh, Harry, you gave enough, Harry, Harry, you gave enough examples. I need to go to Jim, but before I go to Jim, I want to say you're, you're absolutely correct. 
you, but you gave enough examples. Here is uh, one other thing, right? I love what Fanny, a lot of people want to dog Fanny Willis because she's outspoken, because she had a relationship, yeah. romantic relationship with the guys. I want to say this. Look, I'm not saying it's wrong or right or anything like that. I mean, look, you know, because of who we are as a society, that should have stayed personal and away from the public view, but it came out. But I, she said something yesterday on CNN that I was glad that she said. She said, I am not ashamed to have had a relationship because what the Trump people and others are trying to do is make it seem like she's some sort of a loose woman or something like that. And yeah. I, I, I yeah. like the way that she came out and said, I'm not ashamed that I had a personal relationship with somebody. Hey, it was ill-advised because of who it was, okay? But I mean, love, if you love somebody, you, you try, well, anyway, I'm just glad that she said, she put that away, uh, uh, came out and said, don't try to think I'm going right. to sit down and be ashamed of this and go and put my tail between my legs and stop. The train is coming. I'm still going for what the law says. And Donald Trump is a criminal and we intend to prosecute him. Right. You can try anything else. Harry, That's let me right. go to Jim. Thank you so That's kindly right. for calling in, my brother. Right. All right, come on in, Jim. Hello. Uh, yes, I wanted to talk about Joe and uh, Ken Paxton, his argument. He seems like he's losing his own argument there because Ken Paxton was already charged or being investigated on this uh, stock deal before he was even elected to office, if you remember that. Yeah, I do and remember. Still, yeah. You know, yeah. And uh, if, you, if you're innocent of something, it seems like to me you'd like to clear it up pretty quickly. But this has gone on so long. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and what Joe – Joe is a is a smart guy. The problem is he doesn't see his own hypocrisy. And uh this seems to be a big problem with the Republican Party because somebody that uh, supports you politically or you is doing the same thing doing what you like politically doesn't mean that they can go scot free on these other things or that you somehow uh make it into a conspiracy theory that something is just being done to make them a, they want to be looked at as a victim of something. Uh, you know, it's not as a, if, if Paxton was a Democrat, I'd be saying, yeah, let me, what's he doing? What did this guy do? Unless, you know, if, if he did something, then let's, but Republican party, it's the complete opposite. It has become the complete opposite where whatever you can get away with, this is the, uh, this is the standard. They don't uh, see it as they don't see their own hypocrisy. Jim, let me let me interject here for a second. First of all, I want to say welcome Eric Hayes and Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. Eric's from uh, Atascacita and Kingwood. Eric says, uh, not matter what you believe, don't you have to prove it? Yeah, we have to prove it. And the fact that he signed off on it, he pro he, uh, he he accepted that he committed the crime. And he got a slap on the wrist for the crime that he committed, okay? He got special uh, treatment. He was privileged, Mr. Hayes. Now, when you talk about the hypocrisy, uh, here, here's the deal. Uh, and, and you're so right, Stephen. Democrats eat their own when they commit uh, these crimes. They, they stick around like, you know what? And too often, Republicans don't have their people, even as they are hurting them, they don't have their people pay the price. A good example is a good senator that was a comedian, Al Franken. Al Franken had a picture where he was simulating playing with somebody's, you know, part that the woman was a part of, really. It was a part of the joke. But we were in the Me Too era, and Democrats forced Al Franken to leave the Senate. Uh, you know, they're trying to force uh, Menendez to leave the Senate. You know, you don't see anybody defending these folks, right? Unfortunately, we don't see that on the other side. And that it has an effect on democracy. Because these guys, if you're tribal this way, we should, the tribal, the tribe, the tribalness that we should have well, should be Americans. We are Americans. Go ahead, sir. The thing was the the thing with Al Franken was kind of overblown. It wasn't he he was just goofing around and it yeah. was all on right there. He he never even touched the lady. You know? Right. <laughs> 
but she was but trying also to she, she, a joke, but she was a part out. of it. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting yeah. that. We had a delay. Sorry. Anyway, Jim, uh, look, yeah. you're you're absolutely right, and I am I'm hoping that um, with with people with us taking a measured approach and trying to get people to be introspective, think within themselves, that slowly folks will stop talking about this now um uh, eric uh, when i talk about false equivalence i want to say this eric hayes just says clinton got it no slap on the wrist uh clinton didn't commit what uh paxton did clinton was a personal picadillo okay a personal thing just like fanny willis or anything else these were personal relationships these other guys harmed others with money with stealing donald trump stole Donald Trump uh, uh, stiffed people who did work for him. Donald Trump raped women. All these things are true, proven truths. Donald Trump admits to grabbing women by their parts. And people give him a pass. You have to ask yourself, was this your, if this was your daughter, if this was your mother, if this were your different things, okay? Let's just think. And Fannie Willis didn't use taxpayers' money to do anything. Uh, Mr. Hayes, stop reading the right-wing lying machines. Come on in, Donald. Hey, good morning, Alberto. How are good you morning. today? I am fine, my brother. Talk to me. Okay, you just had to be a dancing chicken when you were growing up. Now that you're older and you've made it through the system, now you can speak out. And, and that's what people don't understand. Your attitude affected your altitude, which helped you to succeed because no one stood in your line of sights when you had your crosshairs fixed. You got your degree. You got in the system. You worked. And no matter how hard they tried to get you to show that attitude, you kept it inside. And that's where the problem is. Well, thank you, brother. I I I I think that's a uh, that's a a good thing, and I I hope. Look, uh, whatever the case is, I think uh, when we leave s some self out of it, and we can we we can, and yes, you're right. I got a lot of things completed, and it it gives you a certain amount of freedom to say, and to be just honest, right? But you know that is where we need to go. Anything else, Donald? Before I go to uh hey, to so, Howard, you know what what they do is these. If you call it white privilege, it's privilege on anybody that has money. Because if they can get a video of you going in and robbing a 7-Eleven, it's easy to convict. They're tough on crime, and it's all about the prosecuting attorney's numbers and how they're doing this and that. And I, you're talking to the people with the no-knock warrant. Those were just some poor white trash. That, you know, yeah, but they, I, I'm glad. Oh, bro, Donald, stop. I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I need white people. You're a white guy. I need white people to hear what you just said. The black guy that shot him up or was a part of the group that shot him up. But he's a police officer. Crap, he had the right. He had the right stripes on. He got off. OK, he got so far again. He got off. It's white people dead in this case, and you you kind of you kind of show the power dynamics. I don't want to. I, I, some other time we can talk about whether white privilege is true or not. I believe white privilege is true. I do. I think that Howard, my brother in the studio, is jumping for white privilege. No, because Howard could tell you some stories where he thinks white privilege hurt him. Right, but that's a different. That's a topic for a different day that I want to take a full hour and discuss honestly. But you hit, you brought in an important subject here. The the, the status of police overrode the status of race. Oprah's power as a billionaire over power that of race. We we need to go over those dynamics some other time. But Donald, I want to go to Howard and we we'll, we'll talk tomorrow. All right. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Later. Yes, sir. All right. Come on in, Brother Howard. Yeah, I just absolutely love Donald. And Donald mentioned uh, the Trump derangement syndrome happening here in the control room. <laughs> <That was funny. laughs> but Arnie Arneson this morning, the part that I heard, she, she brought up a very important part. She was talking about Project 2025 oh, and how Donald Trump and with the, the waggings of tails and the media paying all attention to this, they're not paying attention to the insidious project 2025 and what they're doing so oh, we know. really need 
more attention to Project 2025 and less about this circus going on in our news uh, media. You know, so, uh, Howard, you should scold me for that over and over and over again. We should have a Project 25, uh, 2025 daily segment. You know, we really should. I'm glad you brought that up. We should have a well, Project 2025. Uh, yeah, we should be we, talking we... about this nonstop because yeah. look, mm -hmm. there, it's insidious and it's an, it's an insidious movement to take away the rights of everyone, not just you, Democrats, not just die, yeah. everybody. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, and if they, I, if I am, Donald Trump, go, go ahead. I no, saying, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. Trump, if Donald Trump accidentally becomes president again, and it would be a pure accident, uh, we've had it. Project 2021 yeah. will go right into place. Ultimately, there'll be a civil war, and we'll all lose. Everyone will lose in this. Project 2025 is an insidious movement that needs to be examined and opened up and exposed for what it really is. So um, this, this, mm. you know, this news media circus show around Donald Trump and his trials and all that, okay, I could buy into it for a while. But that's just a smokescreen for something even more insidious. Boy, and that's what I know. Heard. Howard, Howard, uh, look, I am going to find a way to do a, a daily segment on Project 2025. I mean, I think that's important. You're absolutely right. The circus well, around Donald Trump leaves, leaves the door open for uh, Project 2025 to go on, on, on contested. Thank you for that, bro. Let's go to Brian. <laughs> Oh, unnoticed. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Brian, it's your turn. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Brian. How you doing, my brother? Good, good. I just want to thank all the left wing for making Donald uh, Trump $3.4 more billion. <laughs> when <he> sold... <laughs> you know how he did it, right? Of course I know because how he, he did it. He got kicked off of Twitter. So yeah. He's smart enough to do his own job which is, first off, making the left very, very angry. And it made him $3.4 billion. Okay. So I just want to thank the left wing for all of that. All right. Um, let, because... let, 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 let me correct you um, on one thing. Paper. Let me correct you on one. Did, did you want to say something, Howard, before I re responded? I say, yeah, $3 billion on paper. But... Right. That's care. what I was about to explain. Let me, let me explain this to you, my brother. Okay. Difference. Yeah. Not, not only that, here's the funny thing. That is, and I want the entire audience to listen to this because uh, he's thank brother Brian is thanking the left for kicking for getting Donald Trump kicked off Twitter so that he had to go create his own Twitter. But the the, the idea that Truth Central has any true potential is a sham. Okay, Truth Central made a total of about five. I think it was under five million dollars. OK, and for that five million dollars that it made, some other friend of Trump bought or, or capitalized it enough that it was worth now seven billion dollars. So here we go. A company that makes five million dollars in revenue got a angel billionaire to invest in it and give a false on paper impression that trump is worth three billion dollars okay but let's break there for one second and listen to me brian this is regular this is capitalist mathematics now okay now if you look at reddit reddit went when reddit went public reddit had a revenue stream of 858 million dollars repeat $858 million for Reddit, Trump and his Truth Social, $5 million in revenues, $40 million in losses. Reddit, no losses. Now, let's go one step further, all right? Uh, Reddit and, and, and Truth Central, I think their capitalization is about the same. Now, who is, yeah, Trump is the smart one here. He's the crook. He's the one that's selling his snake oil. And Brian is, Talking about being, Brian is giving Trump kudos for create for using capitalism to create an a, an instrument that ultimately is going to cost all the people who buy that stock 
when it crashes because ultimately, if you believe a stock has some relative value to what it represents, meaning in the case of this stock, Truth Central. In the case of the Reddit stock, Reddit, okay? Nobody uses Truth Central. We just use Truth Central to hear Trump's latest ranting. But everybody else uses every other uh, social platform. His platform is a failure. And for that, that just shows you how, that just shows you what capitalism is all about. You capitalize a country, a, a company, whether it is successful or not. Back in the days of the internet revolution, they capitalized websites. You put up a website and it's worth billions and then they'll talk about EBITDA, earnings before taxes and whatever they, they would call it, right? It's the biggest scam there is. And Donald Trump, as a scammer, participated. So, Brian, you are right. Uh, Trump is a, is a very smart crook. And a lot of the, the people who would buy that stock, by the time it crashes, he would have caused the people who love him a lot of money. So you love Trump? Go buy the Truth Central stock. DST, I think it's called, or DJT. Go ahead and buy the stock. Because you know what? When you pay for that stock, all that, that $3 billion is going to go into Trump's pocket. And after it goes into Trump's pocket, when he sells that stock, that stock price is going to crash. Anybody want to place any bets on that? Your turn, Brian. No, I'm just happy that uh, he's smart enough to manipulate the system, pay off the uh, ex uh, exaggerated fine that uh, the judge gave him. And you're so, happy that a lot of uh, – and are, are you happy that a lot of people who are going to put their money into that stock which are mostly Trumpists, you're happy that they're going to lose their shirt as well? Hey, if that's their money, they can do whatever they want to with it, right? And, and, what, I, I, I repeat, are you think, do you think it is okay then for them to lose their shirt to support Trump by buying his stock? You don't mind that he's, it, that in effect, that. He's, he's swindling his own people. Oh, it's a mathematical fact. It's a capitalist it mathematical fact. It hasn't yet, but it will. It's a math yeah. it's a statistical I mathematical I fact. Just want to say I, I just All right. want to say thanks. All right, Brian. Thank Brian, you have a good day, sir. All right, go ahead. let me get to the studio. Come on in now, Howard. Oh Lord. Here we go again. Nothing from me. I've already ranted enough. How about you, All Jack? Right. Well, um, I think we kind of need more compassion and a little less judgment. You know, the border issue is excluding people. The gay issue is another wedge issue. It's about excluding people, not including people. And with that, thank you, everybody. Love all the callers. We never got to the actual meat of my show today because you guys called. Love it. Love you. My name is Egberto. Stay tuned for Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. Coming up next on HD1, Amy Goodman's Democracy Now! and Steve Hunter with you talk right after that.